Welcome, everybody. This is a, a peek in my uh, library, a little peek in my library, but it's almost everything, uh, almost the books I have of Kraaf. And there are two, I don't know if I can laser, two films here also. So, I want to talk about today about understanding what giftedness meant for Kraaf. And I want to, or Kroof, I don't know what you say in English. <laughs> <laughs> Kroof or Kruif. Everybody came in the world, they say, ah, oh, Kroof, Kroof, Kroof. When they thought you were a German, then uh, they didn't like you, but you said Kroof, then they say, oh, you're a Dutchman, and then it was okay. So, I want to talk about understanding uh, giftedness for Kruif, and what it meant for him. And I want to start with a teaser. Um, these are my uh, documentaries a few uh, documentaries. There's not yet included 14, uh, the musical, and also there's not yet included JC, a chronicle of uh, an ora oracle. I don't know how you speak it. Oracle. That's, um, that, are, that are later documentaries, and they are not yet on uh, DVD. So, the teaser. Uh, this is an interesting conversation between uh, a well-known, at the time, well-known player, and that was Henk de Groot, and a, a journalist, uh, Kuipov. And Henk de Groot said, we now have a little skinny boy, just a little skinny boy, who tells us, and mark the words, who tells us how to play football. He just told them. And Groot was nine years older. Don't you just hit him in the face, Kuipov said. Eh? He is uh, brutal, or he just he should shut up. But Henk Groot answered, "No, because he is almost always right." So that's interesting. Kruif knew how to play football. He was 15, 16 years old. Okay. Now I want to introduce myself shortly. Um, I'm a teacher at a school in Leiden, Bonaventura College. I teach social science, and I am a tutor. Oh, sorry, sorry, this is going too quick. I'm a tutor for the gifted pupils or underachievers. It depends how you look at it. And I did the ESHA in 2013. Um, already. It's, uh, Time flies. Uh, I had myself a bit of a troubled schoolhood. Um, I was uh, dyslectic. They called me MBD. Does everybody know what that meant? It meant like a, middle, uh, a minimal brain damage. A, a, a psychiatrist told me I had a scatter brain. That meant something like your brain is not functioning, it is scattering, it's not coming to a kind of harmony. Later on, uh, somebody else told me you have a uh, disharmonic, harmonic, uh, disharmonic profile. Uh, also not so nice to know, but okay. <laughs> um, I'm probably twice accepted. Exceptional, yes. That's a question. More. Okay. Um, now, I want to start. Kruif died, of course, in uh, March 24, uh, 2016. And um, he was uh, a driving force eh? behind a lot of successes, uh, best Dutch player ever. Um, he was voted the best European player um, uh, of the 20th century. And... Um, um, his, the, he, uh, what they called uh, be, behind a lot of successes means something like he also uh, generated more successes at other places. For example, he had success in Ajax, the Dutch national team in Barcelona, but he also had great influence on the successes of the Spanish national team. Yes, so it's, uh, it was a really great player. And Guardiola said something like, he built a, a, a cathedral, but we just have to maintain it. So there you can feel something like the proportions of his greatness. Now, 
uh, the sun says here something like, he made the game beautiful. Um, uh, he was, at his death, uh, he was in, almost infinitely praised. Uh, at all, people were at all. We say in Dutch, uh, about the, the death, nothing then good. Something like that. So, what they said was, he was a genius, a legend. Um, he left a mark on uh, football history. He was an inventor, uh, probably more uh, a great advocate of the idea of total football. And he was also a pioneer in professional football. He was ahead of his time. And during his lifetime, the commons were not so positive, and the reactions on his actions were not so positive. So how did Cruyff or Kruf experience his giftedness? How was it to be ahead of time? And what did he experience? I will stipulate um, in a few keynotes, uh, quotes, especially uh, I, I selected uh, quotes, and maybe I have too much quotes, but I selected a few. And I want to show something like the role of giftedness in his life, what it meant, etc. Okay. Um, you can say uh, uh, giftedness determined uh, the, the vision on football. And this led also to renewal of football, but it also led to making demands on football. It led to professionalization of football, which now is much praised. So his giftedness had influence on that. And I want to try to show that. Um, oops, uh, let's see where I am. I just go like this. First of all, and this is, looks a bit like what Henk Groot said, I just saw everything. Why things went right. Why things went wrong. And he saw it quickly. He was well known for his speed, for seeing it at this, the same moment. And this capacity or talent, this giftedness, this determined the idea, uh, this, this determined the idea of total football. And I don't know if you know what total football uh, meant, or, but it was a, a well-known, uh, uh, famous expression. Uh, he either invented it or he was a great advocate. And it's something like you play without the ball or you have to also participate in the game when you're not having the ball. And you don't always walk, are walking towards the ball, but you are, have to take position. You have to know where your position is. And you have to walk ahead and you have to see the game. Like that, something like that. And then also, you had to take over the duties of another player. So a back player have to be able to take over the wing player. Uh, so, and then there uh, um, came something like what they called in 1974 the orange machine, the well-known machine which was functioning all the way, all the way. And in, uh, in this is... Uh, uh, this is interesting. This is a poem. Uh, the poem was called Garciana Kruf, or Kruf, a poem in a collection of poems about philosophers. And it's from a Dutchman. And he wrote this sentence, and this sentence, in a way, grasps the main idea of total football. And this grabs also how Kruf saw it. And how did he saw it? People walk where they see other people walking. And total football meant the opposite. You don't have to walk where everybody is walking. You have to know where you have to walk. 
So this is a, it could have been a quote of Krauss, but it isn't, it's a quote, but of course the, uh, the writer of the poem uh, had listened to Krauss and I think he grasps it beautifully in this sentence. So, um, this meant, uh, of course, his capacity to see everything meant also total football, meant also renewal football, meant also the success. But, um, he also experienced a few things with this, and this is uh, revealing because he is, uh, he is so much interviewed that he told so much that you can uh, pick and choose these things. So, he said something what it meant for him. That you see everything, and therefore you always must talk. And if you're talking about a random situation, you are immediately, and the cursivation and the, uh, is from, uh, from me, you are immediately pointing out somebody else's mistakes. So that's not, not a pleasant thing to do, of course. And he said something like, yes, I found it the worst of it all. In Dutch, het naarste wat er was. Dat is het naarste wat ik heb meegemaakt. That's a revealing, I think. So, that's something he experienced. Uh, you can say, maybe a burden or a side effect. Uh, an unpleasant side effect. Then about his vision on football. He was actually social minded and I uh, uh, put it a bit together. Um, like uh, he had a vision and it was the players should be guided. The players should be taken care of. The players should have to have rights. He should have to be, have the possibility to study while playing football because you have no income after your football. And he also said players should have, have a better income because they have to earn for the rest of their lives. So they have the right on a pension. So he was thinking about the position of the player. And I have a lot of quotes and I don't want to uh, recite all those quotes, but uh, now I have some time, I can take the time. <laughs> so I have here a few of those quotes and here he explains those things uh, and his ideas about professional football. And as a kid he saw that uh, there wasn't taken care of uh, football uh, players and they had no money after they stopped playing football. And he said something, uh, I was determined to do something about it in the Netherlands. And he says something about how he was vision driven and what it meant for him. Because from my vision of professional football, I thought it necessary to rage against the established order. Always, if necessary. So that means something. Eh? You have to go into the culture, you have to go into uh, uh, the the amateurism, it was amateurish at that time. Now, now he made it, of course, professional. And another thing like how, uh, how he dominated it from his view, because from my vision of professional football, I thought, oh, sorry, that I already said uh, the latest one, that tournament must be played and things must be organized as I see it. So he didn't compromise, it wasn't for discussion, his vision, was totally dominating. Now, um, uh, so he, uh, this is his idea, and his vision on football meant professionalization of football. Then, what did he experience about this, uh, uh, this history? Let's go to what he experienced. It wasn't best, or it wasn't nice. Um, conflict, name-calling, he was brutal, conceitful, sometimes people said he was a, a traitor of his country. And I will explain uh, why. Um, he, for example, he had a reasonable thought, he demanded insurance for the legs 
of the football players. And he delicately pointed out, uh, like uh, the, uh, the officials were insured, but the players were not insured. And here I have a short conversation on the one, one of the first times when I had to fly somewhere with the Dutch national team, I asked the KNVB uh, official, we players are insured for this flight, aren't we? He looked at me strangely. What if we crash? What do the women get then? He dumbfolded and speechless. And the sharpness of his remarks, what do the women get? He, he just couldn't believe there was no insurance. There should be insurance. There was no insurance, whatever. I didn't left it with it. I just talked and nagged until this was properly settled. There you have Cruyff again with his big mouth, they would say. Now, this is one thing, but when he said, I'm refusing to play for the national team, people said, oh, you're a traitor, you're, you're bad, you, you don't have feelings for your, for your country, etc." So, it wasn't bad because you have to see this is a reasonable fault. You have to be insured. It's minimalizing, profanalizing everything what it is. And he gets treated that way. So it didn't, didn't go down well, we say. Okay, this, uh, what is it? And then I have a few more of those things, and they're all repeating actually the same pattern, so I can skip it, but if you are interested, I can, um, I can follow. Okay, smear campaigns, also name calling, being money hungry, we say, of course, in Holland, uh, Geldwolf. Everybody was making jokes with Geldwolf. He, he, was, he, said he was money hungry. There was also um, following ups like jealousy, uh, tension, and conflict between players, etc. Um, now, a famous player, he could earn a lot of money by advertising. It wasn't accepted. And, uh, I have here a few quotes uh, about that. But footballers who start doing the same, uh, advertising in the Netherlands, no, no, that couldn't be. That didn't fit the image of the sport. The protest singer with his songs against the big business granted everybody his Jaguar, his house on the canal, and his quarter of a million. But a football, a footballer. That's why jokes came into the world. Have you heard the last joke about Johan Cruyff? No pay first. Like, like it's smearing, it's, it's uh, uh, actually uh, not pleasant. With those sharp sentences, journalists could write that I was only thinking about money. And if they wrote their pieces, I'm sorry, as if they wrote their pieces for nothing. Yes, I'm oftenly, and there is how he experienced it, deeply hurt, but I don't get worked up over it. I don't know if it's the right translation, this stands something like, Maar laat ik me niet opwinden. En er waren all kinds of following ups on these things. People were jealous. Always they wanted him. All journalists always came to him. They want to always take pictures of him. They want to always have him, uh, etc. And Kuyf often said, oh, take somebody else. I, I have no time or something like that. But they always wanted him. And actually he pointed out quite well that he couldn't do nothing about that. He was famous, he could play football, he was quickly, he saw things, he was exceptional. So, uh, jealousy, tension, conflict. And um, I wanted to show uh, how he experienced these things with another example. Cruyff demanded more income and renegotiated his contract. He was threatened, and when it failed, his parents were tre treated badly. So, um, also not nice. Um, but uh, let's see the quotes. Um, and I picked them uh, and I, I fold them a bit together. What misery including threats, came over us day after day as the negotiations about my contract dragged on and we became more and more isolated. The balance between my performance and its reward 
had been lost in previous years. I had suffered this as a gross injustice. Was it reasonable that the Ajax board got angry with me now that I wanted to see my real value as a player determinated? And there were all kinds of things. He took a manager with him. You, you were not, a, you didn't took a manager with you, etc. And then the contract failed or refused to give in. And then the seats uh, were taken from his parents. And you must understand his mother, when his father died, his mother had to work for a kind of 20 years, cleaned the dressing rooms, of I uh, the changing rooms of the players at Ajax. So kind of hurting thing to just take the seats uh, from, uh, from your mother and father, but that's the next father, his first father died. So I thought that was so little-minded that even I wouldn't have thought possible. All that vanity and therefore the revenge. And he especially was sensitive about that because he said, if you have something with me, why do you pick on my mother? That's injustice, that is, uh, that, that's not right. You have to punish somebody who did something. That's, that's a question of, uh, of law. Another example, and how late are we? I will quick. Um, I will end it. And my sum up is, he was between a rock and a hard place. That's interesting. Um, I believe that's very interesting, and we can learn a lot about that for some of the gifted people. It's not for all, but for some of them. It is clearly that Christ thought that he had no choice. Giftedness and his vision determined his life and actions. He had to follow up. But it meant for him, and I hope I've shown that and demonstrated that, Conflicts, a lot of conflicts, smear campaigns, bad name calling, gross interest, deeply hurt, humiliation. So gifted and conflicts and humiliation. And I have two things how he felt about it. He felt he had to leave the Netherlands. He was chased like, and we say in Holland, as a dog, I don't know, from the terrace or something, I don't know if that's English, but he, was, he felt chased out of the Netherlands. And he even said something like, uh, he was so hum humiliated that he could crawl to Barcelona if he had to. It's not nice. It's, it's heavy stuff, I believe. Uh, it's, it's, and that's... My conclusion, of course, for the gifted, it is a revealing case about what kind of dilemmas, what kind of dilemmas giftedness may include. And I want to stipulate it's not for all, but some of them are ahead of time, know things, and they unwillingly are driven into great conflicts, troubled, uh, troubled situations. And um, I want to say one last thing. Um, and now I don't know what. <laughs> uh, um, Reeling the, the, the dilemma. Um, no, I will leave it at this. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the lecture. You shouldn't go see some uh, films on internet uh, because most of you, I think, haven't seen him play football. But it's a joy for the eye. Okay, thank you.